everyone! I realized it's actually been over a year since my last Q&A and I thought it would be a lot of fun to do another one. Yeah, so I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me questions and I got quite a few to go through. Uh, so I'll be answering as many as I can today. Alright, let's get started. Heba29 asks, What was your first ever clay charm you made? It's been a really long time and I don't actually remember exactly what I made but I know that it was a small little pudding that I made out of clay and that's actually where the pudding from the Pudding Fish Cakes comes from. Knee Blossom writes, Hi Helga, I love your videos and you inspire many. Thanks! I'd like to ask, how did you get to know about Palmer Clay? So I was just searching the web one day and I was always into arts and crafts and when I saw these little charms, I thought it would be so cool if I could make those. And sure enough, searched it up and found out about Palmer Clay and I love how accessible it is. Pretty much anyone can use Palmer Clay. You don't need like a huge kiln or a huge you know, firing oven or anything like that. You just need any regular oven, even a toaster oven would work perfectly. So once I discovered that and looked more into it, I found this community, this little tiny community on YouTube. And from that YouTube community, I felt like I could also share some of the things that I was making. Clay Creations asks, how old were you when you started doing clay? So that was, a little bit over five years ago, so 14, 15 years old, yeah. Uh, which is the most important rule to follow for Palmer Clay or your golden rule? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think one of the most important steps in working with Palmer Clay is the baking part. You have no idea how many times I've burnt my pieces, I put the settings on too high, or I forgot them in the oven and they would just burn. That definitely required a lot of trial and error. Every oven is different, so it's really important at the beginning if you're using a new oven or you're just trying this out for the first time, make sure you check up on your clay every couple of minutes or so. A tip I have for that is lowering the temperature and baking them for a little bit longer than you usually would. With a lower temperature, you'll have less chance of burning your pieces. Okay, next question. Jinjin Crafts asks, what do you use to film and edit your videos? I get this question a lot. What filming equipment I use, what camera I use, and also what editing software. So let me go grab my old camera. All right. So this is the Canon Rebel T3i, and this I have used for over three years now. Um, and I just recently got the camera that I'm using right now. The lens that I like to use best is the 50mm 1.4f Canon lens. I'll put a link in the description box below which includes all of the equipment I use including the camera that I use, the lenses, the lighting equipment, tripod, all that jazz. Definitely go check that out if you're interested. The other question was what editing software do I use? I use Final Cut Pro. Before I got my MacBook, I used Sony Vegas Pro, which is also really great if you have Windows. MacBooks also come with iMovie for free, which is also really great if you're just cutting up your footage. Uh, yeah. Georgia Diane asks, any tips for getting artistically inspired? Hmm, good question. I feel like with making miniatures, sometimes I would just go around and just like maybe see a lamp, for example, and think, hey, that would look so cute if it were miniaturized. And I feel like a lot of things are really cute when they're tiny. In terms of just gathering inspiration, I feel like going anywhere on the internet. If you have a slight idea of what you want to do, Google search that and you'll get so many things related to that idea. I also think that if you take that little bit extra effort of paying attention to your surroundings and being mindful of what's around you, I feel like you can definitely find a lot of inspiration from that. UT Booty asks, how did you decide to become a YouTuber? So when I was first starting out Polymer Clay, I went to YouTube and found this really tight-knit community of polymer clay crafters. Back then, there were maybe 
probably less than a hundred people at the time and I was just so inspired by what other people were making and producing and I also learned so much from all the tutorials that I found. At one point I was making so many things and I also wanted to be part of that community. So I started posting my own videos of showing what I was making and also showing tutorials and techniques that I found through my experimentation. So that's how I started on YouTube. YouTube, and it's definitely grown so huge, more than I could have ever imagined. Sharing this craft is so important to me. It's pretty crazy that this craft has been shared so much within the time period that I was here for. And I think it's absolutely amazing and yeah, I'm really excited to see how the polymer clay community evolves from here. Just Shelly asks, how do you balance work and school and YouTube and just being the amazing being that you are? <laughs> well, thank you so much for saying that. How do I balance it all? Time management is definitely a big thing, but I think what's more important is realizing why you're doing the things that you're doing. I make videos because I really love making them. I love producing them, I love creating the craft itself, I love sharing it with you guys and getting a lot of feedback from you and also talking to you guys too and seeing what you guys are making. So whenever I feel stressed about making videos, I try to get back to hey, I'm doing this because I love doing it and I really don't want it to become a job for me or at least I don't want it to feel like a job. Sometimes I'm editing a video at 2 a.m. in the morning and I'm trying to get it finished to upload the next day. To be honest, I love doing that. Sometimes, yes, it's hard, it's hard work, but in the end, it's so much fun. It's so fulfilling for me and I just, I just love doing it. <laughs> Crafting Depot asks, why did you pick the name Pudding Fish Cakes? So as I mentioned earlier, the first charm that I've ever made was of a little pudding. So that's where the first part of the name comes from. One of my friends had a bunch of nicknames for me and one of the nicknames was Helgi Fish Cakes. I really liked the fish cakes part, so I added pudding and fish cakes and that's how it came about. Teddy Bear Draws asks, how many packs of clay do you have right now opened and unopened. <laughs> so this is a really interesting question. I'm going to dig out my clay and we'll see. Okay, so I have a lot of clay. I really like hoarding this stuff when they go on sale. I put all of my open packs of clay in these containers, which is really great because I separate the colors into the different compartments so they don't stick together. I just think it's a great way to store these because you can open it up and you'll have all the colors in front of you. You don't have to open them separately in separate bags. So I find that really convenient. I also have this bin just full of unopened packs of clay. Yeah, I really like hoarding this stuff. I think this will last me a while. <laughs> so that's all the time I have for you guys today. This was a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if you want me to do more frequent Q&As. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. There are a ton more tutorials coming your way very soon, which I am so excited about. Uh, so yeah, thank you all so much again for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!